Welcome to our technical update on late blight in potatoes from Corteva. I'm Craig Chisholm, the Field Technical Manager for Fungicides, and I'm going to take you through the UK blight situation. 2022 was relatively dry and, as you'll recall, very warm. The blight pressure in the middle of the season was very low, and it was only late in the season that blight started to be seen, primarily in volunteers rather than in crops. Looking at Corteva trials in 2022, the blight infection came in relatively late, but we still saw what I call the Zorvec bonus in terms of efficacy through into the stable canopy phase from our applications at rapid growth. Plus, there was still a pronounced benefit of the two additional applications being retained into the stable canopy phase as we've seen in previous years. So our strategy doesn't change very much with the 2 plus 2 approach ensuring as clean a start as possible, retaining two Zorvex into the stable canopy phase for when the blight epidemic really starts to ramp up later in the season. This is the SRUC site as seen on the 22nd of August. There wasn't a huge amount of blight to be seen then, but you can see that the first blight lesions were starting to come into the untreated. But when we went back on the 16th of September, things had moved on enormously. And you can see here the difference between the untreated and the Zorvec treatment. In this chart, what we're looking at are products being applied from the second spray right through to the last two sprays. You can see that the untreated red line there takes off from the 15th of August and it just keeps going and it reached 100% on the 22nd of September. The black lines indicate the standard, which in this trial was Propamacar plus fluopicolide, with the solid line being applied at 10 days and the broken line at 7 days. You will notice that where we've applied Zorvec and Davia on 10 days is really quite a different picture and it maintained a clean crop right the way through to burn down late on in October. This next slide moves on a little. What we're looking at is the effect of using Zorvec in the rapid growth phase of the program. Note that the blight epidemic started to take off from the 15th of August when we were in the stable canopy phase and therefore we've applied exactly the same program right through the stable canopy phase of the crop. So what you're actually looking at is the difference from what was applied prior to the time when blight actually came into the crop. And what you notice is that there is a delay in the development of the blight epidemic where we applied Zorvec and Davia during the rapid growth phase. The difference, as you see, is about a fortnight in terms of when the blight epidemic started to take off. I refer to this as the Zorvec bonus resulting from its curative activity and systemic movement into new growth, providing that clean start that we get from the application of Zorvec and Davia during rapid growth. If we then proceed to use either one or two Zorvecs in the stable canopy phase of the crop, that gives us a further benefit in terms of keeping on top of blight. Finally, there's a question mark over the CAAs given the rise of 43A1 predominantly in Denmark. At the moment, we have no CAA resistance detected in the UK and may therefore make use of them as appropriate, being allowed up to six in our programme. Just be aware that where a product has a single active ingredient, be it dimetamorph, benthiavalicarb or mandipropamid, you may want to consider mixing with an alternative mode of action, probably utilising mancozeb or straight cymoxanil. In Zorvik and Davia, benthiavalicarb is co-formulated with oxythiopiprolin, which is unique in frac group 49. To date, there has been no shift in sensitivity to oxythiopiprolin. Corteva continues to recommend use of two applications at rapid growth phase and then retaining the remaining two Zorvec and Davias available to you for use during the stable canopy phase. So if you're applying at the rapid growth phase, the simplest way to do that is to apply two applications as a block on seven or 10 day interval 
and then that should enable you to resume your seven day program thereafter. So the conclusion from our late blight program was that Zorvec continues to provide unrivaled activity versus Phytophthora infestans with no shift in sensitivity, making use of its systemic and curative activity and persistence during rapid growth, even in a dry season, has proven its worth once the blight epidemic started to take off later in the season. The Zorvec bonus was still there, and it seems to be between one and three weeks, depending on the speed with which our epidemic is moving. And finally, a word on Titus. In terms of post-emergent herbicides in potatoes, it still provides the most comprehensive post-em herbicide available, particularly in a dry season, if the pre-em herbicide options have not worked quite so effectively. And don't forget that it also picks up a range of grass weeds, including cooch. Thank you for your attention. If you need more information about any Corteva product, call the hotline on 0800 689 or visit corteva.co.uk.